Today's Gospel Sunday, August 18, is from St. John chapter 6, verse 51 to 58. Jesus said to the crowds, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever, and the bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. The Jews quarreled among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Jesus said to them, Amen, amen, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you do not have life within you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him on the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me and I in him. Just as the living Father sent me and I have life because of the Father, so also the one who feeds on me will have life because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven. Unlike your ancestors who ate and still died, whoever eats this bread will live forever. The Gospel of the Lord. Today's faithful reflection is from Father Soy Hernando of the Missionaries of the Beatitude. We normally share a meal with someone we love. Families usually eat together. From time to time, too, we invite friends to join us for dinner. It therefore comes as no surprise that friendship builds on meals. Indeed, lovers eat together. Of course, during meals, we do not simply eat. We also share life stories and engage ourselves in some small conversations. When we are at table, the host usually serves the food. Then the rest of the diners share and pass the food to one another. The image is that of family and friends sharing food and conversation with one another. We listen. We speak. Thus, meals by their very structure are like the Eucharist. We listen to the word and we eat the bread. In the case of Jesus, a good number of his meals were not just familial or social events. There was method and logic behind them. He broke bread with those whom society considered public sinners. In a culture that considered sin and sinfulness as something that rubbed off on others like dirt or stain, a culture that highly recommended social distancing or having no dealings with public sinners, Jesus would naturally court religious criticism or trouble from pious groups such as the scribes and the Pharisees who frowned at public sinners and stayed away from them. Yet there always was a religious intent in his table fellowship with sinners. In the case of Levi, later called Matthew, it was to tell people that healthy people do not need physicians, sick people do. I have come to call not the righteous, but sinners. Of course, that's taken from Mark chapter 2, verse 17. The meal was an invitation to conversion, renewal, and discipleship. In the time of Jesus, tax collectors were ostracized not simply for being corrupt, but also, and more importantly, for taxing them and, in effect, helping a foreign rule, such as the Roman Empire. It was considered as a form of treason. In the case of Zacchaeus, the meal was a movement from ostracism to inclusion. Today, salvation has come to his house, for this man too is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek and to save what was lost. That's from Luke chapter 19 verse 9. Today's gospel passage talks about another meal, this time with a hungry crowd. The purpose was to instill in them the promise of eternal life, 
Whoever eats this bread will live forever. John 6, 51 It was intended to tell them that eternal life with God would start with the very life itself, with Jesus. Unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink of His blood, you do not have life with you. John chapter 6, verse 53 The goal was to tell them of the authentic and true reality of divine nourishment. For my flesh is true food and my blood is true drink. I must add, not metaphorical, not symbolic, but true. Finally, the aim of the meal was to tell them that as disciples, they needed to have that sense of communion and intimacy with Jesus. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me and I in him. Today, the Lord teaches us a barrage of faith lessons, the promise of eternal life, living the life itself of Jesus, the truth of divine nourishment, the sense of communion and intimacy with Jesus. Indeed, receiving the body and blood of Christ is a necessity. Indeed, receiving the body and blood of Christ is a privilege. Let us pray. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Amen. Take out for the week. The Eucharist is an invitation to conversion, renewal, and discipleship. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.